Welcome to the Vision Software demonstration video. My name is Matthew and today we're going to be looking at Vision Warehousing. Now out of the product suite this is going to be the orange icon on your desktop so we'll just open this up as you normally would and the first step is to log in. Now you will have your uh, login details provided uh, once you've uh, purchased the program. Now this large grey area here, this is going to be your main sort of working screen. This is where all the windows and information will appear uh, once we get started working on the program. And for starters, let's just have a look at the top menu. This is one of the most uh, crucial areas here, this maintenance tab. This is where you can create your customer information, uh, enter their details. And you can also create products here, product groups, uh, packaging types and so on. So this maintenance menu, this really is uh, one of the most crucial ones. Your warehouse locations are created here as well. You can, you can create them from scratch or you can upload them from, uh, from an external file. Now the next three are all uh, very much grouped together. You've got your goods inwards, uh, stock and uh, goods outwards tabs. That's where you're going to be doing a lot of your uh, main tasks. You can make uh, inquiries here as well on the inquiries tab. It's really quite uh, self-explanatory. One of the great features of Vision as well is that the reporting is very comprehensive. You, you'll uh, have reports that will be relevant to uh, all levels of staff from warehouse workers, uh, delivery drivers, all the way up to uh, chairman level. Okay, that's the top menu. If we move over here to the right then, uh, we have our navigation panel. This is where we're going to be accessing a lot of the records. Uh, so let's bring up a customer for starters. We'll be using some test data today, so this is our test customer, Joe. And this is going to be your customer display. As you can see, all the, all the customer's details are going to be displayed here in these fields, uh, which you can actually tab between. These fields here are all fully editable, all the white ones. Uh, the yellow ones will grab information from elsewhere. So that's the customer details tab. If we go to delivery addresses now, uh, we can see that there's two different delivery addresses uh, specified for this customer. Now if we go to the bond tab, this is where we establish whether the customer is liable to pay uh, excise and customs duty. The various product groups they carry are listed here as well. Now if we click on the contacts tab, we can see that um, all, all the different contacts at this uh, particular customer or this company uh, are listed here, all their contact details and uh, which um, emails they are signed up to. Now if we go into the EDI reports here, we can see which email uh, reports have been set up for the customer. Uh, white ones have been set up and grey ones aren't available. The checkboxes here just denote that this customer will receive all of these emails. You see every white box there is ticked. If we go into another one, just go into Joey here, there's only two there that are checked. So each customer contact can decide here which reports they want to receive. If we go over to the right on the Report Profile tab, there's a drop down here on the top left which actually allows you to select the type of picking note you want it to be printed. So uh, there's a few set up here, there's some standard like that would be your own, or there's the option to have uh, one of your supplier's logos printed on it, or the name of the customer, then it can be printed with their own logo. That's just a, a useful feature. And that's essentially how your customer maintenance will be displayed. So if we come back over to the right, let's do uh, a product this time. If we just enter Joe once again and search. And the products that they carry will be listed at the bottom here. And you see they're listed by product code, description, package description, and so on. Most of the information about each product will be listed on this front page, just in these separate fields. Uh, we've included certain specific fields for the drinks industry here, like this vintage one is used with wine. So let's just go into this one. As you can see, the product's code and name are uh, displayed at the top there. And these fields, again, are fully editable. Listed underneath as well are all the uh, different quantities of the product. So we have invoicing, goods inwards and outwards tabs. HMRC once again whether the product itself is liable for excise and customs duty and uh, supplier pricing, customer pricing. There's quite a lot you can do uh, with each product then. So let's move on now to uh, goods inwards. 
just have a quick look at a pre-advice entry. Okay, we've just opened up a goods receipt. We haven't actually specified a customer here, so you may notice the customer code field is empty. Uh, this drop down next to the customer code actually allows you to select uh, which particular site, which of the customer's uh, warehouses or depots we're looking at. Now, it's important to remember that if the customer doesn't have any excise goods, then only some of the pre-advice information will be required. And also, although there's a lot of fields here, not all of these are actually mandatory. Uh, certain ones are grouped together for quick order entry, and a lot of them are actually pre-populated through the keying process. Now let's move on to the warehouse graphical view. This is one of the more unique features of the Vision software. This actually provides a visual representation of your warehouse layout. So let's select uh, warehouse 80 just here. And this is like a top-down view of the floor plan of this warehouse. You see the coloured squares represent uh, shelving units and uh, anywhere that stock is actually stored. And the grey area is uh, corridors or empty floor space. Just to, just to give you a more sort of accurate representation of your particular warehouse. Uh, you may notice these blocks are actually colour-coded as well. So if we have a quick look at the key, I can show you what this means. Uh, the light blue squares are 0 to 20% filled, so those are mostly empty and available for use. Uh, green squares are 21 to 40, yellow is 41 to 60, orange there is 61 to 80, and red there is more than 80, so that's almost full. And the grey squares represent, like I said, open space or corridors. Now we can actually drill down into a particular row or column, so this view is as if you were standing at floor level with the racking towering above you. These rows of squares actually represent uh, different rows of shelving, with each square being an allocated area. So we can drill down into one of these. And listed here are the six different uh, rotations of stock which are kept in this area. So we can drill down into these as well and view um, which products are stored here, and the quantities, and which customer they're allocated to, and so on. So that's a warehouse graphical view. That's a really useful tool for uh, keeping track of your stock. And that's actually one of the most detailed ones on the market at the moment. Okay, another section just up here. If we go to Goods Outwards and then go to Orders on Hold. Unfortunately, as with anything, um, orders don't always go to plan, so this area just lists why exactly each order has been held up or delayed. Uh, as you can see, a lot of them here are held up by customer. Some of them have multiple reasons, or uh, if the customer is bonded, they might be working for a reference number from HMRC. So uh, that just helps you to keep track of uh, what's going on with each order. Okay, let's have a look at adding an order. Here we go, this is your window. Right, so let's once again just enter the customer code at the top there. And you can select the warehouse name as well. Now we're on the order header tab, which is where you're going to enter all the basic info on this order. So yeah, it's a sales order. And if needs be, we can select the bond type from this drop down as well. Got your order on hold box there, just tick that if applicable. And this is where we enter the delivery point. Now we can look up a postcode here just to fill in the address. And you've got your delivery address fields under here as well. We've got a couple of buttons down here to switch to uh, the next tab. Uh, that is, rather than using the top controls, we can use these buttons just here to switch to the options and line screen. OK, and here's the order options. Now we can set the picking date and group here as well as uh, specifying instructions. The pick date here is going to be one of those little drop-down calendars again. And that's going to be the same on the booked or collection date, just here in the booking or collection section. Here you can enter the name of the collection driver as well as the vehicle reg, and specify a time. On this order option screen there's a couple of areas which plug into different uh, Vision packages as well. There's the Vision bond options here, which you can specify if they pay duty. And Vision Distribution as well, you can select your uh, charge band here and any other information which will be used in conjunction with uh, Vision Distribution software. And down here as well, you just got the options for your uh, labels. And if we click this button here, it will move us over to the Lines page. And from here on in, we have to use the top buttons to move on to the different tabs. So you've got your UB info here. Just the regular fields, name and address and so on. And these two here will let you enter your um, information for NATO or diplomatic orders. UB transport, then this works very similarly to the uh, warehouse receipts transport screen. You've got your additional uh, guarantor field here as well. Okay, just your other options here where you can specify uh, any messages to be included with the order, parcel carrier details here, and any other confirmations that need to be sent via email. You can also add invoice details here, and whether the customer qualifies for any discount. 
and then it's just the sundry charges which can be picked from this drop down here and let's just cancel this for now okay moving on let's come up here to the goods outwards menu and go to warehouse dispatches now this is another really useful section that displays your uh, orders that are awaiting pick so if you just come down here and select uh, the site from this little menu and now if we go over to delivery awaiting pick now if you click search then all the orders will come up here which are still waiting to be picked you can see all the customers details listed here and the document reference and so on uh, over on the left as well you can see we can also add uh, delivery instructions and pick instructions for, for particular orders if there are any requests from the customer or uh, special instructions involving these items then they can be listed here now as this is quite a big list we can actually order it by any of these fields just to make it easier to find uh, similar ones and this is really handy for adding them to a bulk pick bulk picks are great for grouping together uh, selections of items which can either be found in the same area of the warehouse or if they're all going to the same customer then they can be grouped together for ease of picking so what we need to do is just create a new bulk pick over here just enter a name for it and click new bulk pick okay and it appears in the list just underneath the selection of orders here are all going to the same customer so as you can see these have been checked and we can just add these to the bulk pick there we go successfully added just okay that off now if we go into the B pick section up here B pick awaiting pick then we can find our new bulk pick that we just made over there on the left so that just makes it easier to pick a lot of items at once, uh, particularly if they're, if they're in a similar area in the warehouse or if they're going to the same customer. That will save you a lot of time. Now if we just go to B Pick Confirm, that will show you uh, all the orders that have been picked and that are confirmed ready to go out. Now let's have a look at the warehouse receipt screen. If we just go into Goods Inwards and then Warehouse Receipts, and all your scheduled incoming deliveries are listed here. And we can select uh, the site code once again in the warehouse. Let's just leave it empty for now so we can view everything. These are all the deliveries for Thursday the 1st. Then you can see we've got a lot of entries spread throughout the day. You've got the customer name listed there along with the warehouse number and the quantity of the order, the cases, pallets and singles. We can scroll through the days as well with these left and right arrows. If we come over here then we need to select uh, a transporter you can select from the drop down here or we can create a new one as well you can add all the company's details here and if we go to the transport contacts tab we can add uh, individual names and contact details for a particular people there coming back to this one we'll just select some test data enter a quick uh, driver reg and expected number of pallets the date field here will actually drop out into a little calendar so you can select uh, the exact date uh, that you want to enter a new one for let's stick with Thursday the 1st and we'll pop it in for 12.30 that's, right, that's already filled so we can add a booking now and there we are, it's added into the calendar just there at 12.30. Underneath the calendar then you've got your returns listed as well. Now if we go onto the bookings without PO tab, there's a few extra fields here but it works very much in the same way as the bookings with PO. Now if we go into the booking administration tab, we can view all the bookings in the system. Uh, this is basically a search filter. You can search by uh, your customer code, site code, hauler company and so on. But if we just click search without filling any of those in, then that will show us everything that's scheduled. A couple of controls at the bottom there, then we can rebook or cancel any selected bookings. And you've got your warehouse incoming admin as well. This works quite similarly to the booking administration tab. Okay, I've just come back up to inquiries here. If we go to product stock inquiry, let's just enter the customer code again and search. We can see exactly which products this customer actually has in stock. 
Right here we have the product code and product description, and over on the right we have uh, the actual stock levels uh, that this customer has in stock at the moment. Uh, as you can see, we have pallets, uh, cases, and singles available. If we just click into details here, we can see the exact status of this customer's uh, stock of this particular product. And we can actually drill into the details of this product itself, just to see some details about it. So that again is a helpful tool just for showing uh, the exact stock levels that any customer has in stock uh, at any one time. Now the last thing I want to show you today is just some reports we can run from the system. So if we go into reports and then stock report, let's do a uh, product stock report. A lot of the reports you can run actually work very similarly to one another, so the first thing to do is to fill in your top fields and just click load report. And as this is a product stock report, this will actually show you all the stock that this customer has uh, in a clear and easy to read uh, printer friendly layout. So here it is, just in this window. And if needs be, we can also export this data. So we go export report, and this will bring up like a save as screen. So you can select where on the computer to save this, and just enter a file name and select file type. So there's a few file types you can use. You can do a Word or a Excel doc, a PDF, rich text, or a crystal report. Okay, let's just do another quick one. This is a flash report. Now, as you can see, it comes up in a slightly different layout, but it works uh, in much the same way. So let's move on now to the statistics report. This one works a little bit differently. This is really useful, actually. This will export all of the data from every aspect of the system, and it's only a few clicks to do that. You just need to select whether you want it daily, weekly, or monthly, and click email, and that'll send it directly to you. Similar thing with the diplomatic usage report as well. This is really simple and really effective. You just need to fill out these few forms and click email, and that's all done. And that's about it for the basics, I think. There's a lot more functionality, but I won't go into that today. Uh, so I hope to see you next time for another Vision Software demonstration. Bye-bye.